welcome to all to another session on big data today we are going to see the evolution of analytical process and its tools so first of all let us understand what is analytical scalability the analytical scalability is majorly about the size of the data that is being stored on the server and how much data is actually allowed to be stored on the server so for that initially we will understand this table which represents different types of data and the sizes that it takes to consider a megabyte of a data it is actually made up of 1024 kilobytes which is a standard music cd4 that holds 600 megabytes that adds as an example a 1 gigabyte is 1024 megabyte which can hold data equivalent to 30 feet of a books on a shelf a 1 terabyte is actually all together the us library of congress which is equivalent to 1024 gigabytes a petabyte is something which is 20 million folder filing cabinets of text which is really very huge which forms 1024 terabytes an exabyte is something which is enormous actually 5 exabytes is something which mankind have ever spoken since its existence which is equal to 1024 petabytes a zettabyte if you consider it as a file then to start downloading it with a high speed internet in the world it will take 11 billion man years to download a zettabyte of file that's what is forming probably for exabytes and yottabyte is something which can be probably for zettabytes and the entire internet will not even actually make up to 1 terabyte yottabyte so moving forward we are here to understand in the evolution of analytical scalability the power of centralization of course internally it includes the decentralization but storing the data on the service is the most important instead of maintaining them on the local systems every time there is a need for an upgrade of the architecture and that's not possible when the data is stored on the local machines it requires lot of money lot of time effort all this instead you can store the data on the database servers or the servers it can be at a larger scale a data center which can store the data and maintain for you always like how it happens in the massive parallel processing databases they spread these data across the sheets across the tables across the systems and they process all together parallelly so as to give a single output even though the size of the data is very very huge we cannot underestimate the value of sql because it allows us to write the queries which can retrieve the required data on the other side pmml prediction markup language this language is more of used for analysis and it generates what is called as metadata and can predict what is the
data, diversions or turnips or outcomes that we are going to expect. Always it is suggested in the modern world to use the technologies like cloud which are actually maintenance free, which maintain have high quality of security and also can store your data permanently which can help the user to concentrate on their business needs instead of maintaining these services. When you store your data on the local systems, always we must be sure that we are investing into the infrastructure. On the other side, even on the cloud, we must be very much aware that how much infrastructure are we using and is it really worth it. When you go to short term, public clouds are always useful and private clouds are higher in cost. The reason? Private clouds have got to maintain high level of backups, high level of security, everything in huge number. This incurs some cost. Whereas in long term, a private cloud happens to be more beneficial than a public cloud. Another programming tool that can be used for storing and retrieving a large amount of data is MapReduce. In the future lectures, we are going to understand clearly what is MapReduce. MapReduce is actually a algorithm that runs on the systems to which is used to store the data and retrieve when it is required. <coughs> Remember, even though you want the data, you are not here to take all the data that is on the server, like what we said, exabyte, yota byte, and so on and so on. As an individual, our requirement is very limited and that comes with only specific requirements, rules and regulations that are needed for the big data. Now coming to analytical, analytic process. A sandbox is one such tool which is used for applying the analysis. Majorly in the industry, this is the most supported tool for the analytical process. There are two types of sandboxes, one among which is the external sandbox. Even though the sandbox is outside the organization maintaining the infrastructure of the given organization. It follows all the requirements that are to be followed as part of an organization. Even though Sandbox is a tool which can store large amount of data, but suggested to always use Sandbox for smaller amounts of data for better processing and results. Every time you do an experiment, always you have to do a sample test. The sandbox can drive additional value from current investments rather than adding costs. It does not inherently cause the need for new equipment, nor does a sandbox inherently 
cause problems with other processes. It can drive more value from existing investments without any negative impacts. Once you understand a sandbox and how it works, you will find that the opposite of what many assume is true. If your data is inconsistent, that actually is more dangerous compared to a redundant data. Often overlooked is the fact that different analytical professionals may develop slightly different definitions of key metrics over time. Their results will therefore be inconsistent. Whereas for a kind of a data that we give, if the results are inconsistent, then there is no meaning in analyzing such a data. An enterprise analytic data set data set is one of those situations. Include every metric definition in use so that all needs are covered. Every time do what is needed and do not expect or over expect what could come out because analysis process is not simply predictable. Always these results should help us in moving forward to come up with new patterns of the data or the results and the consumers should feel as an advantage. Whereas there comes a caution that always we should have a control on the tasks that we are applying, the models that we are considering, the way we are analyzing the data. Now coming to the tools. Every individual modeling approach will have strengths and weaknesses. And that's how we combine them and get the results. This is similar to how many people make a prediction can produce an average answer that is very close to correct. This is what is called wisdom of words. Sometimes whatever we have that is good enough, if we more analyze then maybe we get some results which can lead to confusion. Always we must be here to analyze what is unstructured. If it is already arranged properly, then there is no meaning in deducing a result which is in form of a prediction. All analysis professionals should give today's interfaces a chance. The results may be surprised. This is especially true for those who have been coding for decades and are resistant to anything but direct coding. Always be sure on what exactly you need and what is the input you are giving, but not on over expecting what could be the solution and how fast you can deliver it. R is a tool which is analytic in nature. R has its advantages and disadvantages. It doesn't suit all the organizations whereas it can be used as an analytic tool. Always in analytics visualization plays a major role. Without visualization there exists no such data that can be given as an output as visualization can help the user or the consumer to understand a best better results. The data that you visualize